Hey everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to Top Ways to Deliver Your Code to the Cloud. Uh, my name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft and uh, I will be your guide for this uh, next hour or so. Uh, and I welcome your questions. I'm gonna chat over here on the right. Uh, greetings everyone. Hi, Alexa Inga, how you doing? Um, all right, so I'll just get started here. Um, and let me know if you can't see something or can't hear something. Uh, but the agenda today, I've got, I'm going to go really briefly over what is DevOps. Most of the presentation is going to be a live demo, which I already have set up. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is DevOps first, and then I'm going to go through people, process, and products. And we're going to get right into the demo. And um, then there is some audience participation at the end that I have. Uh, where you're gonna actually check the website. We're gonna do like a little A-B test. Some of you should see one version and another half of you should see another version. Uh, and then we'll do a little poll at the end to tell who, who saw what. So, great. All right, so let's get going. So this is an example of the evolution of people, process, and products. This little video takes about a minute and uh, I think it's a great illustration of the kinds of things that modern organizations are up against when they uh, try and release code. So I'm hoping you guys can hear this. But Holland comes in for a pit stop. Time to refuel and change tires. Lou Moore himself changes the tires. Only four crew members, including the driver, are allowed to work on the car. It's the tenth time. Just know there's only Holland stays in his seat, anxious to get away. Let's watch. Let's watch. There's only four people who are allowed to access the car. That's the first thing to notice. Uh, and everything kind of has to be done in parallel because of that. It only takes a minute. It seems like longer, but yeah. Man, the I tires just... are changed at last. Okay. A crewman polishes the windshield as okay. Holland moves away just 67 seconds after he stops. Okay. There we go. Just a minute. That was a minute. It seems like longer, but here's here's the way they do it uh, in a more modern setting. So if you notice, uh, that is a little bit quicker. Uh, if you notice, there's a lot more people uh, involved. Uh, and believe it or not, this does have something to do with DevOps. Uh, basically, what you saw in the first video is you saw what a typical organization traditionally uh, deals with when they're releasing software. You could go through uh, cycles that are, you know, once every quarter or sometimes twice a year or once a year. Uh, and that was acceptable to customers. But these days, uh, you have a lot more people accessing and requesting access to your applications, your core applications and your data and things like that. And what's happening is that is uh, putting pressure on what can be done uh, on your organization, on the dev team, on the ops team. You know, somebody will want, you know, you can't just release it, the software. People want access from a website. They want access from a mobile app, et cetera, et cetera. And they want more frequent uh, access and they want more frequent releases to your software. So DevOps is a way of accelerating the delivery, just like those uh, cars over time. Uh, the, the pit stops got better and more efficient at doing things. Uh, DevOps is a way to sort of enable you to make your organization more efficient when it comes to releasing software. And that means releasing more often and releasing more reliably. DevOps is a union of people, process, and products to enable continuous delivery of value to your end users. That is a great quote. It's from a colleague of mine, Donovan Brown. Uh, and you can get more info on that. Uh, you can get more elaboration on that at the link there. Uh, but basically what you've got is you've got three different things. You've got DevOps, uh, in the middle, you've got development, you've got operations, and you have to deliver on it. 
Uh, and one of the things to mention as well, another thing I would highlight in that sentence is value. So if you're not delivering value, then there's no reason to go through all of the pain of setting up a good DevOps practice. So why do you want to set up a DevOps practice? Uh, in 2019, uh, the, the most recent report of the uh, state of DevOps uh, is created by this group called the DevOps Research, uh, DevOps Research Associates, uh, and they're actually been purchased by Google Cloud, so uh, that name's not as significant anymore. But uh, the last one was, was actually created in September 2019. And um, there's some interesting findings there. If you do a search on Accelerate State of DevOps Report, you'll find it and you can download it for free. Um, but I highlighted a few of the more interesting aspects of that report here. So the first one is 208 times more frequent deployments. Now, if you don't have a DevOps system in place, this scares the heck out of you because how are you supposed to deliver 208 times more software and still not have as many, you know, and, and not actually exponentially create problems for yourself. Uh, if you notice here on the bottom left, uh, a high performance DevOps operation usually has seven times lower change failure rate as well. So they're releasing more often and they have less failures. Um, and if they do have a failure over on the bottom right, they're 2,604 times faster to recover from those incidents than a regular uh, operation that doesn't have a good DevOps system in place. Uh, and the last but not least uh, stat that I like to uh, show is the one on the top right where uh, it's 106 times faster from commit to deploy uh, in a high performance DevOps organization. Well, what does that mean? That means that when it comes to delivering software an organization that has a good DevOps practice in place is able to actually focus more on things that don't matter. For example, um, focus more on things that do matter and ignore the things that don't matter. Uh, they are actually focused on making sure that the delivery of the features that have been requested meets the needs of the requesters. In other words, somebody has a request, it goes into the queue, uh, it goes through the whole DevOps process, and then you can get to the end and you can actually build something and deliver something that wasn't requested in the first place. There might be some misunderstandings along the way. That generally doesn't happen with a high performance DevOps company because they have all the trivial, repetitive tasks uh, ironed out and that's something they can actually manage on their own. Okay, so how do they actually implement a good DevOps process or a good DevOps operation? Uh, and the key is people, process, and products. So let's just go a little bit into that. So first of all, people. Uh, it's really, really important that people are able to um, enable, uh, the people are actually able to manage their own process and make sure that they have good communication in place between the dev and the ops team so that the dev team isn't just saying the old standby of, it works on my machine and ops team just make it run in production. I don't wanna hear any details. And the ops team doesn't have to go back to the dev team and say, hey, you know, some of the things you did in dev don't necessarily translate to ops and the environment that we have for ops isn't exactly what you've been building on in dev. Uh, you have to have a, a people, process, and products in place that basically allow you to define roles and have those roles work together smoothly. And that's the first thing that comes to mind with that is people. So process. I mentioned process a couple of times. Now, uh, typical software development life cycle here. You've got plan, develop, release, monitor, and learn. Uh, it's important that your process, managed by the people, uh, can be as seamless and smooth as possible. When you create a new feature in planning, you want to make sure that that feature is well communicated in the development test to make sure that what you've actually asked for is being delivered. Uh, and then uh, you want to make sure that the release supports what's been defined in the plan, development, and test phases. And last but not least, you want to make sure that monitor and learn delivers what um, what was promised uh, and actually monitor and learn is the 
often overlooked stage of things. Generally, people are so focused on planning, developing, testing, and releasing, and just celebrating that that release got out and there were no bugs that they don't really fo they don't really go back and say, "Hey, did that change that update actually deliver what we were asked to deliver?" Uh, and that's that's one of the things. If you have a good DevOps uh, system in place, it is good for that. Uh, so products. Last but not least, products. Um, Products are what support the people and the process. Uh, if the products uh, do that in a seamless way, uh, you're winning. So Microsoft, of course, uh, I work at Microsoft. We're gonna talk about Microsoft Azure. Um, Microsoft has several uh, items that you can use uh, to support your process uh, all the way through the software development life cycle. Uh, for developing, we have GitHub, we have Visual Studio, and Visual Studio Code. I'm actually going to highlight Visual Studio Code today. Uh, for operations, we have Azure Services and Azure Tools, Azure Monitor, Policy, Automation, and Security Center. Uh, we spend a billion dollars a year on security. We take it seriously. Uh, and there's not a lot of organizations out there who have the money to spend a billion dollars a year on their security center for their data center. Uh, but because we aggregate things amongst all our customers, we can actually afford to do that. And we need to. We need to keep ahead of the uh, security threats that are out there. Delivery. So delivery, we have Azure DevOps, which I'm going to demo today. I'm going to demo GitHub extensions, and I'm going to talk a little bit about GitHub Actions as well. So let's get into that. Let's see if we do have any questions. Uh, okay, SD Border is the dev of the ops. That happens a lot. Uh, and by the way, uh, when I build these demos, uh, I am the dev and the ops person as well. So I totally relate to that. Uh, um, but it's still nice to have this automated process in place. And I'll show you uh, how I automate this. Uh, okay, so we're going to deliver with Azure DevOps today in our demos, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what we have as part of Dev Azure DevOps. What the heck is that? So Azure Boards is like, it is Kanban boards. I was going to say it's like Kanban boards. It is Kanban boards. Um, and Kanban boards allow you to do things like define tasks, prioritize tasks, delegate tasks. Uh, Azure Repos is uh, a place to put your code. Um, we have internally at Microsoft, uh, we use Azure repos for things that we're not releasing as open source. Uh, they are stored in Azure repos. And the reason for that is because everything is integrated with your identity management system on Azure repos. So you store your code in there. It's just like very similar to GitHub repos. Um, but all of your code and all of your management and all of your security is integrated with your identity management system that you use inside your organization. It doesn't have to be something separate. Uh, GitHub is really great uh, for GitHub repos if you're going to uh, be collaborating with other people. In fact, when we create an open source project, we put it on GitHub and we have a rule internally at Microsoft. This is an interesting piece of trivia. I hope so anyway, is that um, we have to, if we put something on GitHub repos, we have to release as an open source within 30 days. So basically what happens is things are developed on Azure repos in the early phases. And then when it's ready for prime time, it's ready for sharing. We actually put that out on GitHub. Uh, Azure pipelines is actually what we're going to focus on today mostly. And those are pipelines are called our build pipelines. And then we have release pipelines as well. And I'm going to show you both of those in action. What I'm going to do is a little demo of I'm going to change something on my local GitHub repo. I'm going to push it to GitHub. That's automatically going to trigger a build pipeline and a release pipeline out to a website. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, OK, so Azure Artifacts. Uh, Azure Artifacts is a way to manage packages. Uh, so if you have a package manager like NPM or Maven or something like that, um, this is a way to actually manage uh, versions of those packages so that you have preserved your dependencies. It's also great for auditing and um, uh, version control. Azure Test Plans. Azure Test Plans is a way to actually check and see if websites, browser-based apps are working properly before they're released to production. Kind of a good thing. Uh, and uh, it also does some other things for backend load testing and things like that as well. But today we're going to focus on Azure Pipelines. Last but not least, uh, GitHub. So GitHub, uh, Microsoft purchased GitHub uh, a while ago. And GitHub has been developing GitHub Actions for a while now. They were announced uh, some time ago. I can't remember exactly when. 
but GitHub Actions uh, started simple, and now they're getting into uh, pretty cool functionality where you can build CI CD uh, applications uh, internally, completely inside of GitHub. Uh, today, I'm going to show you some features that aren't in GitHub yet, though, um, and those are things like uh, building releases and integrated approvals from staging to production and scheduling things into production and stuff like that. So uh, there's really, really good basic. If you need to just do a build and test, uh, GitHub Actions is pretty good uh, and it's getting better every day. Um, now, if you need something more robust, like maybe you need to deploy to multiple clouds or you need to have uh, secure and uh, approved releases to production, then uh, Azure DevOps is the way to go. And I'll show you some examples of that. Um, and basically, oh, last but not least, uh, you know, GitHub, as you know, is integrated with popular IDEs and uh, it actually has even integration with Microsoft Teams now, if you're using that. Okay, so uh, Azure DevOps is also, aside from Actions, we have these things called extensions. So what's the difference? Actions can be created in, um, in GitHub, and those are things that generally you execute yourself. You write them yourself, you execute themselves. Extensions are things that are built by third parties. For example, today I'm going to show you an extension that was written by Microsoft for GitHub. Uh, and what it does is it actually triggers a GitHub build, uh, Azure DevOps build when there's a change to a GitHub repo. Uh, so GitHub extensions, uh, you go into the GitHub marketplace to find them, and um, they're built by third parties. So I'll give you an example of that in a sec. So I talked a little bit about, um, yes, so... Uh, Janisku7 uh, mentions so many nice pipelines you can make with GitHub Actions. Yes, you can. Uh, in fact, uh, um, a lot of people are using them to replace their simple CI CD uh, builds and releases directly to production. So, for example, if you're building, let's say you're building a Node app and you've got a website that you want to put it on, um, it's pretty easy to actually build that, test it, and then deploy that directly to production. If you have more stages than that, you probably want to use something like Azure DevOps, which has more uh, you know, authorization and controls and team uh, features, things like that. Uh, but for a single developer who's working with pipelines, they actually have some pretty cool stuff. Um, I, I'll show you a bit of that in a bit. So, um, But let's talk a little bit about DevOps. So I showed you the high-performance DevOps uh, organizations. And I alluded to, you know, allowing those organizations to define their roles and having those roles work well together. So uh, sharing the load at Tailwind Traders is, uh, Tailwind Traders is a demo app I'm going to show you today. And this is sort of a hypothetical team. So we have this company called Tailwind Traders. They're a retail app. And um, they have a dev team and an ops team. And so what does each one of these teams provide when you're looking at a good DevOps system? Well, the dev team provides code. They provide unit testing. Uh, they have a GitHub repo that they put their code on and they help with CI CD automation. The ops team has an Azure DevOps project. Uh, they have web servers. Uh, they provide scaling and uh, they also help with CI CD automation from the ops side of things. Uh, and they provide monitor and secure, uh, monitoring and security as well. Okay, so uh, Q rule, and I'm sorry if I butchered that, I probably did. Uh, I tried to go from Travis CI to this, uh, then ended up abandoning both what to Netify. Uh, but it, yeah, if you're already on GitHub, you can use GitHub extensions. I'll show you a demo of that. And, and by the way, uh, at the end of this, I'll show a repo where you can go get all the source code I have here. And there's even a button to deploy this to Azure and test it out yourself. And pretty much all the things I'm going to show you today are free. So there's a free trial for Azure you can get. Uh, and there's also a free tier uh, after the free trial that, that supports most of these things. I'm using the free version of Azure DevOps in this presentation. Uh, if you need multiple... Um, multiple... Uh, release pipelines and things uh, in parallel, then you have to pay for them. But if you have single release pipelines at any time, like I do in this demo, uh, they are actually uh, free of charge. Okay, so the scenario here is a feature request. So let me show you this website. 
Let me know if you can't see it. All right, so um, here's the Tailwind Traders website. It's just a basic e-commerce website. And you notice here they have free shipping for $99 or more on their orders. So uh, free shipping is, is good. Uh, but the deal here is that the sales team has been looking at the numbers and they're not happy with the money we're spending on shipping. And they think we could do better if we charged, uh, if we only gave free shipping on things that were more than $499. Uh, so what they've done is they've come to the dev team and they said, hey, we wanna test this out. We just wanna, we're gonna give uh, free shipping only if the orders are $499 or more. We wanna see what happens. And the dev team said, yeah, okay, uh, I guess we could do that. But uh, the ops teams jumped in and said, hey, what if we did an, uh, something called an A-B test? which is uh, half the people who come to our website see a $99 shipping cost and half the people see the $499 shipping cost. And we'll see what kind of behavior that provokes. Uh, if they are reluctant to buy for the $499 shipping or uh, if we actually make more money because we're saving money on shipping costs. So uh, the sales team says, great, why don't we set up an A-B test? And uh, you know, the ops team says, okay, so dev team, uh, you go ahead and build a version of the site that has shipping for $499 and we will implement an A-B test for you. So that's the scenario here. This is the actual live website. So how we actually build this, uh, I'm gonna show you the Azure portal now. So this is my Azure portal. I've got a dashboard, I do a lot of different presentations. So this particular dashboard, uh, you can customize dashboards and have multiple dashboards if you didn't know that. But uh, in this particular case, I've got a dashboard here that has my resource group for the uh, Tailwind Traders website. In the back end, we have a Cosmos DB database that handles uh, all of the storage of the inventory information. Uh, and then we have a uh, app service which actually runs the website. Um, we have a back-end SQL Server database that keeps track of inventory levels and pricing as well. Uh, and uh, you can actually just change, in this case, it's a demo, you can just change the shipping cost inside of the front-end web app and it'll cascade to everything. So uh, over on the right here, we have a staging app service and a production app service. And we're going to use those. We're going to go into staging. We're going to test to make sure that the application actually worked. And then we're going to go into production. And uh, it, once we've deployed, and we're going to uh, set this into production, depending on which one of the websites wins, the $499 or the $99 website. Um, <clears throat> and we have this thing called Canary. So Canary is a typical term you use to test something out uh, when you're moving it. Uh, and this is called testing in production. Man, sounds like fun, huh? Um, so testing in production is uh, where you actually have, in the case of app services, in Azure app services, we have these things called deployment slots. And the deployment slot will actually be on the production server, but it'll have a different version of the application sitting there. And when people come into the website, half of them will go to the, the production site that's already been there, and then half of them will go to this Canary site. And I'll show you exactly how that works in a little bit. I just want to give you a quick summary first. All right, so the next thing I want to do, I want to go into Visual Studio Code. Just want to check, make sure everything's going good. Okay, looks like we are. Uh, so Visual Studio Code, this is where you actually change the uh, application. Uh, and by the way, I wish a regular site was this easy to change, but this is a demo. So all I have to do is change the uh, order shipping, uh, free shipping for $99 to free shipping for $499, and I save it. So in Visual Studio Code, I've actually installed a uh, extension called a GitHub Pull Request Extension. And what that does, if you see over here on the left, uh, it's actually checking my local repo and comparing it to my uh, repo on GitHub. And it's saying, oh, you just changed one file. It's called translation JSON. Uh, and um, th that's ready to be uh, staged and, and committed and pushed to production. Or pushed to, uh, sorry, not to production, to your GitHub repo. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, to stage it using the, um, the uh, GitHub pull request extension, all I need to do, hit the little plus button and see that little blue icon up there. It's moving, moving, moving. So what it's doing is it's moving it to staged in GitHub. 
though you can do it from the command line as well, but this is just nice and graphical for demos. All right, so <clears throat> message, and we'll say uh, demo to shipping to nine, and I always put the date, 0511. Okay, and then I can just commit it by hitting the little checkbox here. Ba -ba -ba. Now I can push this to production, or, oh, it's a little bit slow. It's because I'm streaming at the same time I'm doing this. Normally this takes a second. All right, there we go. Now, uh, there's different options I have with the pull request. I can do a sync, and this actually does something pretty cool. It does a uh, pull and a push so that uh, to make sure that everything is in sync from uh, the GitHub repo and my local repo as well. So let's do that. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to push that to production. So the build takes about eight minutes. So I'm going to do this now, and then I'm going to explain what I did uh, during the whole process uh, in a bit. Okay. Oh, no, nope, still going. <laughs> yeah, once again, it's because I'm streaming. It's, uh, I don't know, my bandwidth seems to have slowed down to ISDN levels. <laughs> Check my chats. Everything's cool. Good. I'm glad you guys are, I hope you guys are getting something out of this. If you have any questions, please do uh, speak up in the chat. Uh, and I will be as interactive as I can while I'm going through this. Oh boy, it's taking a while. Come on, it's not that big a JSON file, guys. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, it's already pushed there. So let's go check out GitHub. All right, commits. So this is my GitHub repo, and uh, if I go to the actual website, uh, I did test it about an hour ago, so uh, just to make sure I'm not wasting your good folks' time. There we go, demo shipping to $99, uh, I said 499 but anyway, uh, 2020 uh, That's not a very good repo site. Anyway, um, now this actually triggers a GitHub uh, I'm sorry, an Azure DevOps uh, build. And let me show you how it does that. So to show you that, I'm going to go back to this. And I'm going to show you a little video that I put together earlier because um, this is something that uh, needs to be put in in advance, you have to get your GitHub password and a bunch of other things. So what I did is I went into Azure, into the GitHub Marketplace. I searched on Azure and I found this GitHub uh, Azure the GitHub Marketplace extension called Azure Pipelines. So I already installed it, and then what I do is I configure Azure Pipelines. And what I want to say is, anytime that any change is made to my GitHub repo, do something. In this case, connect to my Azure DevOps organization. So I just left GitHub and I'm going into Azure DevOps now. I'm picking my subscription that I want to use for Azure DevOps. And I choose an organization. And the idea here, I mentioned before, Ops and Dev working together. So the organization uh, that we have was already created by the Ops team. And same with the DevOps project that we're working with. Uh, and the, the, dev, the Ops team has given this to the Dev team and said, use this for your uh, projects. And then what we do is we actually configure the pipeline. So we told GitHub to work with Azure DevOps. Now we're telling Azure DevOps to work with GitHub. And what happens is uh, Azure DevOps actually goes through, analyzes the code in that GitHub repo and produces a YAML file that it thinks might work for this particular application. However, um, our ops team has provided a YAML file that meets their minimum requirements for governance and security. And they gave this to the dev team and said, anytime you want to build this project, use this YAML file for doing your builds. Uh, and so just another example of the ops and dev team working together. The ops team controls the, uh, 
organization and the project, and they actually create part of the CI/CD pipeline that you use for actually building it to make sure it meets minimum requirements for the uh, organization. All right. So basically what it does is it creates the pipeline. And once it creates the pipeline, that actually triggers a build. So the build job itself gets built. So that's that's a pre-recorded video. So let me actually show you the real one over here. If I go into pipelines, uh, you'll see when I refresh this, there it is. So this is the actual build that was just triggered uh, four minutes ago. And this build itself uses that YAML file and it's actually in part of the build process right now. So let's go in and have a look at what that does. So it initializes a job, it checks out uh, the GitHub code, uh, it uses NuGet to install NPM, uh, and then it uses a new, NuGet command to start NPM, and it uses a specific version of Node. If we go in here, it actually uses, I think it's Node 10, uh, because this application requires that. So you can specify certain specific things in your actual build process. And right now it's in the middle of the VS build process and hopefully it gets all the way down here and it checks out. Once it checks out, it's gonna trigger a release. So let's go in here and I'll show you what the uh, pipeline looks like. So this is the Azure pipeline we had. Uh, it's actually running on Windows. It's running on Windows latest. It's a virtual machine that runs on Azure DevOps that you can use to actually build things. And there's a couple options as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so it goes out and it gets uh, NPM and there's the use node command I was mentioning, 10 uh, uses the build. And right now it's on the uh, VS build task. And the VS build task is just basically running a Visual Studio build on that VM. And when it's done, uh, it's going to do a couple of simple tests. It's going to copy this to artifacts, and then it's going to trip when this. It's going to drop this to a staging directory, and when that gets dropped, it triggers a release. So a little bit about those VMs that we use. Let's go in here. Here's they're what we call Microsoft hosted agents, uh, and basically you trigger it. I'm using the Windows Server 2019 with Visual Studio 2019, and it's actually triggering that build. Uh, but you can use uh, Windows Server 2016, Ubuntu 18, 16, and you can even use Mac OS, Mojave and Catalina. Uh, those are there as well. And then there's some older versions that are being removed. Oh, they were removed on March 23rd. I should probably update that, that page. Um, but as you can see, uh, these things are pretty cool. They um, trigger... Uh, there's a lot of things inside of these. You notice we just went to GitHub here. Here's the virtual environment that we have. Uh, and there is just an unbelievable amount of code loaded on each one of these virtual machines, uh, including, hey, look at that, we're all friends here, the AWS CLI, uh, Android SDK, SDK build tools, um, all kinds of stuff. So the AZ PowerShell modules there, um, the Azure CLI, of course, a few other things. Uh, Python, there's even Java and a bunch of other things actually built into this uh, that are used for building and testing things. So pretty much anything you could do on Visual Studio, uh, you can trigger one of these builds here uh, and Visual Studio and, and beyond. You don't have to use Visual Studio. Uh, but if you're just using Python, for example, you have versions of Python here ready to go. Uh, MySQL, uh, all kinds of stuff are, are built into this that you can use to build and test your applications. All right. Uh, so let's go back to this pipeline. It's still working. Good. Okay. We got things to do. Uh, let's see here. What else can I show you? Oh, so let's just go in to our releases now. So what's going to happen is when this thing is finished, it's actually going to trigger a release. Uh, actually, I think we can see that live. Hey, this is exciting. Not really, but yeah. Um, exciting as it gets, folks. Uh, so uh, let's see. So it's finishing the build job. Great. Let's go into our releases. Let's see what happened there. So if we actually go into the release, you should see, yeah, there we go. So release eight just triggered a couple seconds ago. Uh, and release eight is basically going to, let me show you an overview of this and then I'm gonna show you how it's built. Uh, 
Okay, so it's going to deploy to staging. So I mentioned before when I showed you the Azure portal, I have a staging server and a production server. Uh, and then it's going to deploy to this thing called Canary, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, and then it's going to go to production. So how do we actually build these? So let's go in here to releases. I'm actually just going to build a new release just to show you how it gets done. It's really easy. Um, so new release pipeline. And by the way, there are YAML specifications for this, so you can actually create YAML if you enjoy that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> but um, you can do it graphically as well. So a couple of things here. So you would start with the artifact. In this case, we're just going to start with a new pipeline and then connect the artifact after. Uh, and this is going to be an Azure App Service deployment, but there's all kinds of different deployment templates we have. Or you can start with an empty job and build your own deployment from scratch. But just in the interest of time, we're going to use the app service deployment here. Oh, uh-oh. Lost connection. You guys back on? I hope so. Yeah, AWS is flooding my... Anyway, uh, looks like we are. I hope so. I hope you guys can see this. Uh, staging. So what I'm going to do is I just created a new stage. So you have your artifact here, and then you have staging. Great. Uh, and if you go into the actual tasks of staging, this is where you actually deploy. So you choose your subscription. Let's choose a subscription. Yep, okay. And then you choose the app service name. So this is the idea here where, um, uh, where your dev team is provided with an app server you can use by the ops team. And this one's called Bevent's Tailwind Staging. Um, I could save this. Okay, let's save that. Let's go back to the pipeline. Great. All right. So we actually want to create a couple more things. Uh, we want to create a uh, canary and a, and a production site. So I can just hit this clone button here. And this is pretty cool. So I can go in here and I can say, Prediction. All right. And we don't want it to go to staging anymore. We want it to go to, we want it to go to Bevin's Tailwind Production. There we go. Let's save that. Okay. Now for the AB test, how's that work? Let's go ahead and look at that. Go back to the pipeline. So we got staging, production. Let's clone this because the Canary that we want to use is actually on the production server. So Canary, and don't worry, I'm going to elaborate on that in a second here. Canary, I'm going to call this Canary 2. Uh, and then I'm going to change this to production. All right, how are we doing for time? We're going good. Uh, so Canary, in this case, we want to go a little bit deeper than just the actual production server. We want to deploy it to what we call a deployment slot. And in this case, we're going to use the resource group Bevin's Tailwind front end. If we go down, there's two product. There's actually two deployment slots defined. Production is always there, and then I added another one called Canary. So there we go. I'll explain what that is in a minute. I'm going to go into the app server and show you what a Canary is uh, and what a deployment slot is. All right, from there, go back to the pipeline. So now we have staging, canary, and production. So I want to do something, though. If I just let this go right now, if I add an artifact here and deploy it, it's going to go straight through, and it's going to go to production. We don't want that to happen. So what we do is we create a post-deployment approval. And this is what I was talking about. Azure DevOps is integrated 100% with your identity management system. So I can actually delegate to anyone at Microsoft right now. Uh, to approve this deployment. Um, and there's something else called gates, which I'll show in a minute. So that's good. So now we're going to go to staging. We're going to stop at Canary. So theoretically, we'll have half and half, right? We're going to have half the site is going to be on Canary. That's going to be the new site with the new shipping, and half the site's going to be on production. All right. Um, now, we don't just want to release this. When, when this stage is finished, we don't automatically want to release this into production. Generally, you want to time that somehow. So that's why you do a pre-deployment uh, condition. So I'm going to get rid of triggers for a second. I'll explain what that is in a second. Oh, no, actually, I'm going to do a trigger. Um, and I'm going to do a pre-deployment approval. And once again, 
Comments, okay. All right, so now we have approvals for post-deployment and pre-deployment, and now I can schedule this. So once this phase is done, I can schedule this to be put in on a Friday night or something when nobody's around. Okay, um, last but not least, I guess that's about it. So I'm gonna save that. And then what you do is you, to set up the artifact, you actually connect it here. And um, you can connect it. In this case, I just do the uh, build that we have. Uh, and I do the Tailwind Traders website. I'm gonna actually gonna connect it right now. And I can do the latest version or I can specify a release at the time I do the release. Uh, I can specify a build pipeline default, uh, or I can go, uh, there's a few other options anyway, but I'm just going to go with the latest release. And if I add this right now, it's going to go in there. Uh, and then there's another setting you use, which is basically just uh, setting up continuous integration. So anytime that a build is finished, it's going to be created. So let's go back to our actual pipelines now. Um, pipelines. So now we have a couple of pipelines. Uh, here's the releases that's done good so here's the actual real release it's exactly what i just built you but i already baked this one uh, so it's been running while i showed you that oh it's still working okay so it's still in canary okay actually this is great so i can show you right now what canary is let's do that so let's go back to the site here and i have if i go into my app service, the uh, BVN's Tailwind Production App Service. Okay. All right, so um, this is my BVN's Tailwind Production. I mentioned the Canary, we have a deployment slot. So if you get on here, this is the website for Tailwind Production. You can see it right there, BVN's Tailwind Production .net. If I go to deployment slots, anything there? Devs, you did a good job, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I can talk about Windows Subsystem for Linux afterwards. I've got it here, I can show you some demos. Even cooler, set up Microsoft Terminal, but that's a little off topic. I'll get back to this and then we'll, we'll cover that. Um, so if you see here, this is my deployment slots and I can have up to four uh, BBAN's Tailwind Production Canary is the deployment slot we're actually deploying to for our Canary stage of the Azure DevOps uh, uh, release. Now, if I click on BBAN's Tailwind Production Canary over on the right here, you see there's a slightly different URL, HTTPS BBAN's Tailwind Production dash Canary dot Azure Websites dot net. Now, let's go ahead. I'm just going to be very brave here. I'm going to start this up. Let's see if it's still deployed yet. Nope, not yet. Okay. All right. So that $499 hasn't been deployed out there yet. It's working on it. Uh, let's go back to our release. Yeah, it's still working. Wow. Six minutes. It's taking a while. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. I have things to do. So <laughs> I have things to show you. Um, so you can see here, it's slightly different, this particular URL. So what happens is behind the scenes, the, the users who hit this website never see that. They only see BVN's Tailwind Production azurewebsites.net but behind the scenes 50% of the traffic is siphoned off to this other website which is inside the website so it's testing in production is what they call it it's actually all on our production server but half the people see the new version half the people see the old version and then what we're going to do is we're going to use monitoring so using something like application insights to track the behavior of those users and see what the most optimal shipping rate is. Maybe they'll reduce it to $399 or $299 and find out what happens. So you get the idea though. You can actually play around with this. You can do half and half and you do that all through a build and a release. So there we go. It's still building. Okay. Um, let me show you the staging at least. I can show you that. So this is a cool demo of the logs we have. And I still have more. I still have more. Uh, so if I go here and I show you the staging website, this one should now, yeah, there we go. So it says $499 or more in order. So that's deployed correctly. Everything's cool. Great. Next, let's go back to this one. Let's see where it's going. Pipeline. Yeah, it's still going. Okay, that's all right. I will switch things around a little bit. 
but the uh, user participation portion of this will be coming up soon. Um, let me see here. Where's my PowerPoint? There it is. Okay, so you saw the build job and all that stuff. Great. All right. So one other thing that I want to talk about, uh, I've shown you Azure DevOps, but if you're using other tools, so this is the same software development lifecycle I showed you at the beginning, plan, develop, release, monitor, and learn. If you're using any of this software as part of your organization already, don't worry, you can preserve your investments. We've actually worked with most of these, if not all, uh, of these organizations and open source projects, et cetera, et cetera. And we have integrations with them. So Microsoft, big company, we've invested a lot in open source and open source integration. And so, for example, if you're using Puppet or Chef uh, for doing infrastructure management, you can actually trigger that and, and uh, tie it into your whole release pipeline in Azure DevOps. If you're using Jenkins, so Jenkins, a lot of people use Jenkins for building. Uh, and that's great. Uh, you can still do build and test in Jenkins. A lot of people have huge investments in that. Um, you can pass that build off to a release in Azure DevOps, which is uh, really nice and secure. And as you saw, uh, pretty flexible when it comes to approvals and things like that. Um, let's see, I wanna show you one thing with Jenkins actually. People don't know about this, but Jenkins actually uses Azure to build Jenkins. So ci.jenkins.io is a website you can go to. Anyone can see this site, it's a public site. Uh, and this is actually where Jenkins builds Jenkins. It's taking a minute to load, ba ba ba. Bear with me for a second. I'm gonna refresh that again. I don't know what's going on. Oh, maybe I need to make it smaller. Probably, there we go. Oh, okay, so on the left here, here's your build queue for Jenkins. This is Jenkins actually building Jenkins. Down here, you have all kinds of applications running. Yes, there's some AWS to be expected, uh, but down below, so ACI, anytime you see ACI at ci.jenkins.io, that's actually, <laughs> Jenkins looks terrible. Uh, I'm, I'm using the old version of Jenkins here. The um, Blue Wave, I wanna say, is beautiful. It's pretty, Blue Ocean is beautiful. Uh, it looks pretty nice. Um, so ACI is actually Azure Container Instances, and that's actually something that, uh, that Jenkins uses to test uh, container-based builds of, uh, of Jenkins on Azure. Uh, and if we go down here further, wow, there's a lot of activity today. This is all live, so I never know what I'm going to find. Uh, there's also some agents here. Ah, just refreshed. Uh, but if you go down to the bottom there, there's, uh, there it is, an Ubuntu Jenkins infrastructure virtual machine. There's also Windows virtual machines that Jenkins uses to build this stuff. Uh, so ci.jenkins.io, check it out. That's where they actually build that. Uh, another thing I could show you that I think is interesting, I hope you do too, uh, VS Code. So I showed you Visual Studio Code before. Um, Visual Studio Code is, of course, open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, let's look at the builds. So Visual Studio Code builds are actually created in a familiar format that you'll recognize, I hope, right away, uh, Azure DevOps. So there's an actual Azure DevOps, and this is public. You can see Azure DevOps building um, uh, Visual Studio Code. And here's some of the latest builds. Some of them fail, some of them succeed. Uh, and they actually trigger these from Flipping around too much. Hold on a second. They actually trigger these from VS Code on GitHub. So GitHub uses the, uh, we use the extension <laughs> from that I just showed you in my demo uh, to handle any pull requests. Uh, and those, whenever anything is pushed out to GitHub here, it automatically, just like I showed you, triggers a build. Of course, it's a little bit bigger volume and scale than my little demo. But um, <clears throat> yeah, from Visual Studio Code, uh, they test the versions of Visual Studio Code. As Frank said, uh, VS Code is multi-platform, so it runs on Windows, Linux, and um, Mac. Uh, and it is uh, open source on GitHub as well. So all you, everything you see here is actually triggered. Here's the code for VS Code. I'm looking at the issues right now, 
And anytime anybody puts in a pull request, it goes through a process. And if it's approved, it actually goes into our build pipeline uh, and preps it for releases on um, using Azure DevOps. Uh-oh, somebody says they lost audio. Hopefully it's back. So I hope so. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I can't see in the chat yet, but okay. I'm gonna assume the audio is back that it cut out for a second. Let's hope. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, what we've done with Jenkins though, there we go. Uh, as part of our Jenkins, working with Jenkins, uh, we actually have some reference architectures you can get. So if you wanna run Jenkins on Azure, uh, you can run Jenkins on VMs and it's exactly the one that you saw in ci.jenkins.io. Uh, and Jenkins on containers, we have another implementation for that. That's the one you saw on ACI uh, using Maven. We also have a ton of Jenkins plugins. So this is just an illustration of the, the fact that we work together a lot with third parties using Jenkins as an example to uh, make sure that our application works as seamlessly with your investments and your organization's plans and processes uh, as possible. Okay, so this is audience participation time. Hang on a second, don't do it yet. Uh, let me see what happened with this darn build. It was taking quite a while. Oh no, it failed. Oy. Okay, well, things like this happen. Preferably not when you're doing a demo, but hey. Uh, okay, deploy. It's probably gonna take a minute. I don't know why it failed. Maybe it's because I had it open. I don't know. Usually that doesn't happen, but I'll close it just in case. I don't know. It's just a website. Darn it. Yeah, uh, if you want to see the logs for that, yeah, I guess we could. I'm not, I'm not all that interested. It just it usually works. I don't know what happened. Uh, eh, it's connecting. Hmm. <laughs> all right. Anyway, while it's running, boy, I hope it works this time. Let me show you one other thing. And this is something I did alert, allude to, but I didn't mention. You're not gonna draw me into the religious discussions about operating systems, kids. I, nope. <laughs> yeah, this is the fun part of a real demo. This is live and, uh, oh, look at that. Looks like, okay, no, okay, good. So it's pending approval. Uh, all right, so work this time, I, I don't know. Um, so I could approve this, but I don't want to. I am uh, going to assume it looks like it deployed and it's waiting for me to approve it to production. So what we want to do now is, uh, if you guys want to go to this site, um, aka.ms mod 50 site, and then in the next slide, I've got another link for you to do a little poll. And the poll is going to, yeah, I think it could have failed because it was open. And the poll is gonna tell us how many of you saw the $99 website and how many of you saw the $499 website. But just click on this site, half of you, if I did everything right, should see the $99 website and half of you should see the $499 website. So I'll just wait like a minute or 30 seconds. Okay, oh, is the video, I'm sorry, uh-oh. Can I change that, can I move it? Hey. Oh. Yeah, that's a problem. Does it still work? I don't even know. Okay. So yeah, sorry, yes. Thank you, Frank, aka.ms. And that's actually a slash mod50 site, but yeah. Uh, sorry, AKS. Okay, anyway, uh, that should work. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And let's see what you saw. So straw poll me, 
2002-04-90 is the next one. Uh, if you guys just want to do, uh, link is, I don't know what that means, link is censored. Hopefully not. Million dollars. Okay, so you guys, if you go to the strawpoll.me site here, uh, 2002, I'm going to fix that video. Next time I'll fix it so the QR code isn't isn't overlapping. Apologize for that. 2002-04-90 uh, is, is the link. Uh, let me post that. Uh, That should work. Yeah. So there you go. The results. All right. Okay. So a <laughs> little bit, a little bit clunky, but hey, it's a live demo. What can you do? Um, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go to that site. Here it is. And if I just go results, so these are the results. Uh, so yeah, 54 to 46. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for those of you who voted. But yeah, basically it's, hey, look at that, 50% straight down the middle, just like it's supposed to be. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> so now what I can do uh, is, uh, let's see, I can go in here to my Azure DevOps and I can just approve this, sure. Now, I mentioned before we have the pre-approval. So I'll go back to my pipeline. So it's pending approval here. So this one's a little bit different. I can defer the deployment for later. And I can say, let's deploy this on Friday night because I'm not a developer. And uh, if, well, I am a developer, but if I uh, wasn't, I would uh, definitely deploy this on a Friday night, correct? Yeah. Developers would never do that, at least experienced ones. Uh, okay. Uh, and we just approve it. And so now it's going to actually deploy that to, uh, it's going to queue it and it's going to deploy it to production. So that's the idea behind that. So we did the whole A-B testing thing. Um, so just to review, uh, what is DevOps? Uh, people, process, and products. Covered that. I gave you a demo and uh, told you about how you can keep your investments. Um, now there's some resources you can get to. I'll post these slides after um, ACA MS DevOps Resource Center tells you all about DevOps uh, in general, uh, not necessarily Azure specific. Azure DevOps Docs tells you all about Azure DevOps. Okay, and I covered up the chat here when I opened that poll. So uh, there we go. There we are. Okay. Yeah, no page of duty. Yes, please. No, thank you. I've had enough of that. Been there. Bitter experience. Don't want to go back. Uh, so, yeah, Friday night deployments. No, no, no. Uh, so, MS Learn Alert. Um, if you go to ACA MS, we've actually assembled something that you can use to get certifications. Uh, in this case, it's called Mod 50 MS Learn Collection, and that covers all of the stuff that we had. Uh, for the application that I showed you today. If you want to recreate the exact demo that I showed you, including this Deploy to Azure button, all you need is an Azure subscription, and uh, go to Session Resources there and Session Code, ACA MS Mod 50 Repo. Uh, it has all the code and this slide deck and a bunch of other things uh, that will help you uh, build this demo, recreate it. If you want to share it, show your friends, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's there if you want it. So. Uh, in the in, in spirit of open source, we've got everything there. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and uh, if you have any more questions, I'm watching the chat, which is over on my right. So that's why I keep looking over here. Thanks, Frank, for the link. All right. Well, if you do have any questions as well, you can find me on Twitter at bbenz, uh, and uh, happy to take questions there. Um, I think my DMs are open. I can't remember, but you can ping me either way. Uh, 
uh, I will find your notes and get back to you. So thank you very much. Thanks for coming. I'm going to stop the stream. Thanks, everybody.